Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and this is that video where I give you a roundup of all those extra features we've brought to you in Dorico 3.5. Some of them are notation features, some of them are workflow improvements. All of them are great additions to the Dorico toolset, and I think you're going to love them. Let's start with some improvements to working with notation. Sometimes there's just a lot of music going on in a small space and there's no way to avoid certain items crossing over each other. In this age of social distancing, we've made it possible to erase the background behind time signatures so that items such as ties don't interfere with them, and also the background behind stems so they don't cross over items such as dynamic hairpins. Both settings are found in engraving options under the time signature and stems categories respectively. Sometimes you may wish to include a performance direction in an instrumental part that does not need to be seen in the score, or indeed the other way around, including some text for the conductor that shouldn't be visible in a part. We've made it possible to set the hide property for text items, and it will affect just that one layout. Now you can write that love letter to the second oboe without anyone else seeing. There are as many different musical conventions as there are stars in the sky, and we're pleased to be able to support more of these conventions with every new version of Dorico. Our approach to beaming rests has become even more flexible by adding a couple of new engraving options. We now allow rests within beams, but without stemlets, including at the start and end of beams. And we can also preserve secondary beams over rests to support cases such as this classic example. Speaking of different conventions, one of the areas that makes my head actually explode is that of instrument transposition, but particularly where there are different conventions for different countries or where they've evolved over the years. For example, some 19th century editions write low notes for horn using a bass clef but a fourth lower than sounding pitch, rather than the fifth higher approach more often used today. My wife plays the French horn, I'm always interested to hear which octave she'll come out in. Clefs now have an octave shift property that solves this problem and lets you write using whichever convention you need. We've made a number of improvements to the look and behavior of slurs including a more refined design and shape, and much better handling of rooting slurs that cross staves. There's a new setting in engraving options to interpolate the vertical position of a slur either side of a system break. It's switched on by default for new projects, but won't affect your existing scores where you may have meticulously edited cross-system slurs. And you loved it when we gave you the ability to scale and rotate an entire slur by holding down Alt as you drag the endpoints. So much so that we've now made that the default behavior without having to hold down Alt. You can still edit the control points to adjust the shape of the slur as normal. I spent too long deciding whether this next one was a notation or workflow improvement. So treat it as the boundary between the two. It's now possible to create a new music frame and fill it with blank staves. With frame editing active, select a music frame and open the flow filter. You'll notice it's now easier to choose between all flows, a selection of flows, and now you can also choose blank staves. The frame will be filled with blank staves using the prevailing layout option for staff size. A property allows you to specify the number of staves to show in the frame. Just imagine how useful this will be when building worksheets. Look how easy it is to provide a blank staff on which the pupil can write their answer. Or when you want to sketch out some ideas by hand, now you can create your own manuscript paper at whatever rostral size you need. Dorico's powerful rule system that governs the way notation, engraving, and other decisions are applied throughout your projects are made accessible by means of our various options dialogues. The number of options included grows with each version of Dorico, so we've made it easier to find what you're looking for. At the top of each category list, in an options dialogues sidebar, 
is a search bar that allows you to find the specific category or section you need. There's a key command of Control L, that's Command L on Mac, to put the focus in the search bar. The list filters as you type. Once you've located the section you're after, you can type Control F, again, that's Command on Mac, to search within the page. Control or Command G will cycle through the results. It's a huge time saver. And if you know the exact wording of the option you're looking for, you can type just the first letter of words found in the options label, and Dorico will still find it. You'll soon wonder how you got by without this. We've given part layouts a creamy paper color to make it easier to tell when you're looking at the full score layout or an instrumental part. And it's configurable, so you can choose your own color here in the Preferences dialog. We've also given you freedom to choose your own background colors. Click on the color swatches for each stop of the gradient and set your desired colors. Or, if you speak hex, type the value directly into the text field. We've added a load of presets for you to use or start from. And, I mean, I could eat some of these. Press this button to reset to Dorico's default. We also let you specify a different gradient for write and engrave modes, again to help orientate you in the program. And you can quickly choose just a single color as opposed to a gradient if you like. This is what I do actually, so when I switch to engrave mode, there is this subtle difference that isn't too jarring a change, but enough to remind me I'm somewhere different. Spinbox controls found in Properties and Options dialog now allow you to perform simple arithmetical operations on the existing value. And there are new tokens for clefts, which can be useful in some situations when added to layout names. And leaving one of my absolute favorites till last, we've added a simple key command to hide all non-printing items on the page while it's held down. Press the key immediately to the left of the Z key, which is a backslash on Windows and a back tick on Mac, and see an instant print preview. Really handy, especially when making fine edits in engrave mode and you want to see results without the distraction of frame borders. I do hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please click the thumbs up button below to let me know you've liked it, and subscribe to the Dorico YouTube channel today to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.